right, welcome to the September HR Business Service Services Committee meeting. We will get started at 4.33 today. So the first thing, we have no guest presentations for this meeting, and we'll move on right away to our departmental reports, and we're going to start out with Human Resources and Director Summer. Yes, thank you. Um, so you'll see on the, the Human Resources report summary, again, busy time of the year. Lot, lots of hiring for both certified and non-certified. We um, we did a new hire orientation at the end of August. We had over 70 new employees attend that, which is great. We are doing another one on the 19th of September to catch anybody that maybe what got hired kind of in that, that span and wasn't able to attend that. And then we also had a recruitment table at Unity in the Community event, with many people dropping by, um, talking about pick subs as well as care for Position. So we're hopeful that we will get a few um, contacts from that. Teachers on call seems to be going well. I do have um, a little bit of updated report based on the numbers that I provided um, in the report. I did receive a official report from teachers on call and actually our numbers last week were, um, from, were more like 60 some percent up to 100 percent. So we had three days last week where we had 100 percent fill rate for our teachers. Um, our paras were still struggling a little bit for the fill rate, so that does bring the average down, and that's where you'll see the lower 63 numbers. But last year, our rates were well below 50% fill rates. So for I, cool. teachers and paras. Yeah. Okay. So I can send you that report. Um, it's actually very interesting. It gives some comparisons to last year as well as you know the para, and it also has some rates, which we will go into later. But it has some rates. Um, rates for our surrounding communities and what they're paying for their sub, their para subs, which might be one of the reasons that we don't have as great of a, a bill for that. Uh, this was as of last week, and I don't have any updated data as far as um, the number of subs that we have online, but we did have, as of last week, 60 that are completely, completely set and ready to go, additional 24 that are completing the final steps. Of our initial that we started with that were considered active in our system, we have hired 18 of those as regular um, employees, so they of course will come off the list. And there are a few that have taken other jobs or are no longer interested in subbing, and then we do have that kind of chunk of 40-ish that we are still trying to reach out to, get them through the process, get them to apply. So there's still you know work to be done there, and I know our on-call person, Melanie, that's on staff here has been working diligently to talk to them and they can actually come into our site and go through the application process right with her if they have trouble going through the, um, the online process. We've had a few changes in staffing. I think last time I reported that we were interviewing for our benefits coordinator, um, Amber Petrusa, who is our front desk person, has been promoted to that position. And this week, we this week and last week, we welcomed two new staff, Sophia, who is our front desk person now, and then Miranda Fox, who is our additional HRIS payroll specialist support. Really great to have this full staff and such a great group of people. I think we're, it's gonna really push us forward into process improvement and getting a lot of systems updated. Um, benefits, of course, is busy with new, new school year, people processing enrollments and a lot of new hires, so of course that generates a lot of, of new benefits work. And then we are looking at implementing a 529 savings plan as well as Roth, so they've been meeting with um, those plan sponsors just to see how we can get them in line here for our employees to have an additional um, benefit option for them. We talked a, a few times ago about having the comb, that we now have 41% enrollment in that app, which is really um, doesn't seem like a high number, but when we think about other services that we provide, like EAP, the utilization of an EAP is typically under 10%, and I think here we're under 5%. So to see a 41% enrollment um, on this app is really great. Um, we are going to have another challenge coming up in October, so there will be some um, communications going on about that, but it's a, it's a mindful minutes um, using actually using the app, so not just having it, but using it. Hiring updates, I do have a, some updated numbers that didn't make this report. Um, so for our certified positions, we have offered, we have posted 248 for this school year, and we have offered 203. And for the paraprofessionals, we have posted 131 and offered 94. 
from Director Severn. So those, it says through 8-5, I'm assuming that's 9 and change or something. Right, so okay. that, that was the numbers that we had from last month, and they weren't updated prior to the report. So the, the numbers that I gave you are actually as of today. Right. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I'm just sorry. Um, so then you'll see our current openings as of last week. Those, of course, have changed because Friday is typically our rotation of, of jobs. But um, a lot of the paraprofessionals are s the same just because we um, we haven't had a lot of applications, especially for the licensed sign language interpreter and some of those specialized uh, positions. But we are getting really close to being full staffed on, on our teachers. And most of that at this point is just movement that happened towards the end of um, the beginning of the school year is still positions that are internally moving, so that'll we'll probably always have a few just because of that. Um, you can see we have um, a fair amount of things in child nutrition, cafeteria monitor, which is not unusual as well as paraprofessionals. We do have some new recruitment materials that will be um, some yard signs that if you'd like one, I've got them in my trunk <laughs> that we're going to be putting out at the school sites just to kind of let people know that we still have available openings and for the type of positions. I think that's one thing um, for a person who wasn't in a school system before. A lot of these positions, I didn't even know what they were. So we're calling them out to say paraprofessionals and, and we're hiring maintenance workers so that they realize it's not just teachers that we're hiring for, that there's plenty of other staff. Uh, not much update in contract negotiations other than um, the National Conference of Firemen and Oilers has picked a date for their vote, which is September 24th. So hopefully we'll have an update on that um, next month. And with the food service workers, we're going to be talking about this much later, but we are looking at updating and improving our hourly pay rates. The hourly right? pay rates, yep. <clears throat> and then just another quick question. Do you ever reach out to PTAs the different schools to think about um, for like some of the nutrition and playground monitors? We haven't done it in HR. I believe the principals have some communication with okay, them, but I'm good. not sure what that looks like at every school. Yeah. Okay. And I'll add, we have uh, three meetings with uh, the uh, parent associations and oh, sites, and we often remind them that we have a lot of opportunities for work jobs. And so we'll, we have one next, matter of fact, coming up this week. Up right. Here. I would just like to say that um, I'm very appreciative of the human resources team and, and the director severance for the, um, the I mean, to, to be um, at a point where we're only looking for six teachers at this point is, is, um, is really, really good, especially considering where we were last year. I really appreciate the team's dedication and uh, also systemic improvement. Questions? Come on, Alana. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. I could, but I'm not. <laughs> All right. Moving on, we'll move on next to the business services portion. Do we have a finance department verbal report? Or are we good this month? We're good this month. I, I'm just working on the, we're still working with the auditors. Um, yeah. They'll be on site next week, so we're very deep into audit mode. And how long do the auditors use that audit usually? We look at that. Is that December? So November 30th November is the 30th. date that everything has to be to MDE, and then they'll spend December putting the audit together, and then we will present to you. Yeah. I just, okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And then our enrollment reports, they will resume after October. Since we're only a week in, we yes. have to give ourselves some time for that. So look forward to that in October. Next, we have our child nutrition report. And of note for this nutrition report is the number of meals that we served for both breakfast and lunch, which when I added them up, if my math is correct, it was about 33,000 meals, which is incredible and wonderful. Um, looking at application for educational benefits that have to do with free and reduced lunch, we see um, we have about seven paper applications and about 335 online applications. Our current students that are currently enrolled in free and reduced lunch, that will expire on the 18th of October. So 
we then go down and look what students qualify through the application and direct certification from the state of Minnesota. Free lunch is about 2,600 students. Reduced is about 540. And the paid is 163. They applied, but they did not qualify. Um, let's see. As usual, we're, they're looking to hire 26 employees, including hourly dishwashers. And this, hopefully, those numbers will go down because we hopefully will approve an increase in wage for our child nutrition workers from about 10 and a half to about 13 and a half. Yeah. So are there any questions on child nutrition? The number of meals is really pretty impressive. Great. Moving on, facilities management and capital project status report. Sure, I'd be glad to go over that. We, uh, we completed 228 work orders in August, currently got 290 open work orders. The Denfeld Tower is really progressing well. We're on the fourth and last side. It may get done this year with the spire put on, or the spire may wait until next spring. It depends on how the weather holds out, but that's really coming along good. Conway Park window project, we're working with Kathy and working evenings and weekends to get that finished. It's just taking a long time. Materials are delayed, but the project is coming good. And we're under budget and it's turning out real nice. The new Denfeld Sped bathroom is almost done. It, uh, we had hoped to have it done before school started, but we don't. And, and that was strangely enough related to lack of labor. Cross Anderson could not get tile set. It was so the labor part of it kept us from being completed. Uh, PSS track lane one issue is still with the attorneys and that I, I hope to have resolution by next month or the month after and that it's really, really been a long time that we've been working on this and hope to have conclusion soon. Uh, as far as cons construction tasks on the hill, the existing facilities building is very close to complete. We're going to be doing a punch list on that in the next couple of weeks. A good amount of work has been done on the transportation the transportation building now. The precast and steel are going up in the transportation building, and it is up in the DSC, and they're actually working on framing interior walls right now. Abatement is ahead of schedule in Central High School, and I'm thinking we're four to six weeks out before demo can start. Uh, under building operations, the staff have just performed an excellent job this summer with the cleaning effort, and the buildings are looking good. We do have uh, kind of a large amount of vacancies. We've got 22 vacancies in the facilities department. Uh, I really have to give a round of applause to the, the operations staff. They really worked hard and did a great job to get the buildings cleaned up and, and ready for school to start. Everybody just really did a great job. Uh, another interesting fact, in the month of August, we had 263 FTE days of people out sick or ill on top of the 22 vacancies. So, it was really a monumental test to get the buildings ready, but they're ready and they're maintained and they're safe and clean and we're, we're doing, doing well. Under health and safety, just some general topics, uh, tasks that were completed. Neutralization, chemical things were cleaned out. Uh, both high schools, fire marshal inspection at Garfield, those items have been completed. Ellis instructor training was held. First safety community meeting of the year that was conducted. Bloodborne pathogens was updated. Employee right to know virtual training was created. Uh, a radio repeater installed at the bowl. The note 14 East Middle School repeater was put on emergency power so it will work if we lose power. And workers' comp is self explanatory, but interesting fact I cannot recall a month in which we've had all zeros for. The report of incidents are recordable or days away from work or days of restricted work. So that's kind of an interesting fact. But, so it was a good month. It's uh, a great month. I'll open it up to questions if anybody might have any. Great. 
great. Thank you, Mr. Spooner. I appreciate it. Now we have Bart for our technology report. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'll start off with the cybersecurity uh, for our Google uh, Gmail. Our emails were up to uh, 542,000. Um, the rejected emails were up to 12. The spam was up. Uh, phishing was up. Uh, let's see, the spoofing emails were up. Uh, but we still had zero emails for malware. Uh, malware is uh, one of the important ones that leads to ransomware. So we're Happy about that. Uh, account information, uh, we're still uh, adding more students as they get their blood learning forms in. Uh, so that increases every day. I, I want to say we have another 1,500 under this number in this last couple of weeks uh, since this report was done. Uh, our storage has increased because more people are back. Uh, the suspicious, suspicious login attempts is also up. Oh, the shared files is up. Suspicious login attempts is up. Up, which is not good. Uh, the failed user login attempts is also up, but that's just people coming back to play. Um, we had 21 um, high severity incidents that were blocked from our data log prevention uh, on Google. The fee rate, uh, we don't have any kids up this time, but we still are still working on the, the, the new bids, which will be at the data center co location services as well as any rate bid for network switches. Um, technology tickets for August were 592 tickets uh, created, 658 tickets resolved, 643 tickets were gained from the resolve. That's pretty much the same today. I believe they have like 650 tickets for For projects we're working, uh, cybersecurity we're working with uh, Security vulnerabilities. Um, we're doing monthly scans on our district internal services as well as external stuff through a company called Arctic Wolf that are based in Twin Cities. So we get that report. Uh, so we've been looking at uh, addressing those issues. Uh, we continue to work with Benson to install and move wireless access points following up limited learning wireless assessment that was done uh, this last spring. And they've been working all summer to do that. So it's moving access points within rooms, within gyms, uh, to make the coverage better in our buildings. So we have an assessment done for every one of our buildings. So they're doing that. Um, the, the new stuff is some of the equipment's coming in for the new buildings. Uh, the new Cisco infrastructure for the DS, ESC, transportation and facilities. Some of the equipment's already been received, uh, either it's down at Garfield or actually it's up on facilities. Uh, we have new AD equipment for the new school board meeting room space, so some of that stuff has been received. Uh, and we did receive some of the new Panasonic security video equipment for the two middle schools. And the two middle schools are getting upgraded video security systems, which will match the high schools. That's great. So, if there's any questions? I thought about you the other day because of Los Angeles, their unified school district had a pretty significant cyber yes. attack. Yes, yes. Real malware there. Did it? And I think it shut the school down. It did. So it students, did. yeah, it was significant. Yeah. 515,000 students shut them down for a, a day and a half, I believe. Something like that. And they, they're not sure what data they lost either, I don't right. think, are they? Not that I would more. Yeah. They so, probably won't want to release that yet. Yeah. We appreciate you doing this. Yeah. Thank so thank you, Bart. Appreciate it. Um, I just have two questions. One is, um, what kind of technology is going to be in the school board room in the new building? Um, you know, how technologically advanced are we going to be? And like, are we going to have our same microphones or not? No, they'll be all the microphones. Uh, yeah. We'll have uh, five displays, uh, two, so three on the inside, and then one projector display behind, like we had, with a screen. Uh, and I believe there's going to be two displays outside. In the entry, so if there's overflow, we'll be in there, and those are 86 inch displays. Um, so we'll have a lot of visibility. Um, the equipment is supposed to be able to you know, record and stream um, these meetings. Um, the microphones are all portable microphones, kind of like we had when we had these meetings when we had the tables down as opposed to the ones permanent on the system. So 
hopefully it'll all be new, well, it will all be new equipment, uh, as opposed to the 10 or 12 year old equipment we had done at Hox. And my other question is, um, how is, does the new video security equipment compare to what already exists at the middle school? Uh, the stuff put in the middle schools is roughly 10 years old, so it's kind of like your 10 year old phone. So yeah, the cameras we'll be putting in at the middle school, the outside cameras are 4K capability. Uh, so that's a huge improvement. So it'll be it'll be the same equipment we have at the high schools. Okay. Much better. Other questions? Great. Let's move on to the transportation report. Um, 32 trips in August, 51 scheduled so far for September. There have been some uh, barriers to getting new bus drivers trained that have to do with the new mandates on ELDT training. Um, it appears that our buses, our new buses that we ordered, hopefully we'll see them in March of 2023. And then attached to the documents on Boardwalk, you can see um, the 2022-2023 transportation <coughs> pricing proposal. And essentially it looks like from 2021 to 2022 to this academic year, we're seeing an increase of about 8.2% on everything. Is that pretty standard? Yes, I spoke with Steve Johnson and he said the consumer price index is uh, average is 8.5. So he said this fell just underneath it. So he was comfortable with this increase. Okay. Questions? Great. All right. Now we can move on to our recommended resolutions that we will be bringing these forth to the full board meeting, what, next week? Is that right? We have a resolution for our maximum levy certification. We also have the acceptance of donations to the Duluth Public Schools. And then lastly, we have acceptance of grants to the Duluth Public Schools. And we can talk about those in more detail when we have the full board meeting next week. Are there any questions about those three resolutions right now? I just want to make sure that, the, you know, you're asking for the max levy certification. Um, do you anticipate using the max though? In when it comes down to the yeah. At this point, I would say yes. Cool. We have uh, preliminary numbers uh, next week when I print that off for signatures that night. Um, uh, it's just standard procedure to ask for the maximum, but of course, we have months to see if that would change. But it's it's good practice to ask for the maximum. Oh, right, and so I, I have known that in prior years. Um, we get excited if we don't actually have to approve the max when it comes down to the actual numbers, not the right. Certificates. And if the max number is in our favor, then it's good too. So I understand. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm excited when, when we come below expectation. That, I, I, I appreciate Even that. Even if That's yeah. right. <laughs> that is correct. Thank you. So other information we'll have on the consent the consent agenda, excuse me, we have the HR staffing report. And then I think this is kind of important news is under our finances on the consent agenda, we will have the hourly substitute pay rate minimum wage increases for FY23. And what you can essentially see if you look through this is we're going from around $10 to essentially around 13 and a half. Yes, um, so the previous rates were minimum wage and a few were minimum wage plus 15 cents. We're, we're, we're just not seeing that that uh, is getting us many hourly employees and quite frankly, it's it, it, even though it's the minimum, it's, it's quite low <laughs> for us to be anywhere nearly competitive um, with any other markets. So roughly we, we moved them up $3.00. Uh, rounded up a little bit for each of the, the positions that were at that low threshold. Um, there's a few things just to note. You'll see the, um, under the food service, we do have the substitute non-unit helper at $13, and that's partially, well, mostly because of our actual contracting rate for our employees. 
is just over that, and we didn't want to have our hourly be paid any anything greater than our current staff. So that's why that one is a little bit um, lower for those few things. And you'll see the same with our uh, in our maintenance. That's the same for the same reason. The other thing that is not reflected on here and actually just came to to us this week with the report from Teachers on Call <clears throat> is we would like to uh, amend this and allow for our paraprofessional hourly to be paid, um, or I'm sorry, the substitute uh, paraprofessionals to be paid at $15 an hour rather than the $13.50 that they're currently at. And then you said to $15? Yes. So here where we have the, oh, okay. Yep, so, so we'd like to propose new rate. Okay. Yep, I mean, so we'd like to do that for our hourly um, on this report as well as our substitute amounts for our paraprofessionals. And that still is below the threshold of our <coughs> entry level paraprofessionals who are contracted employees. What is that? Just do you remember it? Uh, I believe it's six, the entry for the first zero to six months is sixteen thirty seven, so it's a bit higher. It's a bit higher. Okay. Other questions? Um, I have a question under the miscellaneous category on the third page. So are those regular positions we're talking about or are those substitutes for those positions? Um, such as, you know, playground monitor and, and parent involvement coordinator and that. So those are just our regular hourly positions. So this okay. rate, this has both on the, the rate sheet. Okay. I, I, that's not clearly marked or understood under the title of the whole sheet. Got it. I get that. Um, I, and you know, I, I have to say that, you know, for the seven years I've been on the board, just about every year, I have begged the board to approve <laughs> wage increases for all of, for, for the sheet over and over and over again, and we've never gotten any, been able to get it passed in, in agreement, and now, um, because of the times, it, I certainly hope we'll support this, because it's way more than ever I ever tried to negotiate, and it's fully needed, but you know, if we would have done that, we might not be in the position we are. And so, you know, I, I just want to say that um, I tried, and, and I'm glad that we're at a point where it can actually happen now. I, and I would say, too, uh, that the impact of this change, if we, presuming that it's going to, to have a positive impact that we, we it will on uh, filling those positions. It also creates a uh, more thriving work environment for our current employees because you won't have people stressed out trying to do to fill ten different jobs at the same time, and and or cost effectiveness of having enough lunchroom supervisors, playground supervisors, so that you don't have principal always in the lunchroom three hours a day for lunch. Uh, that's that's just not sound financial impact, so I think that it's going to have morale impact, uh, systems impact, and just bill rate impact. I, mean, I have a, a follow-up question, actually, um, in that the main argument every other year has been about wage compression with other staff people. Do you anticipate that being a problem with any of the bargaining units that have already settled with the contract? I would imagine that it would be part of their next contract discussion, but we also have to remember that contracted employees get other things that hourly employees do not, and so I, I'm sure it will be part of the conversation. That was always the argument you used against raising our wages, and so I just hope you're aware of those past conversations. And again, one of the reasons that a couple of those are, are the rate they are is so that it isn't competing directly with our contracted staff. Sure. I, I will hear you. You did some work when you first came about banding and grading to make sure you could look at the way people were staffed and put so that yes. a <laughs> still, lot of work on that. Still, right? still in process, yes. <laughs> Other questions? Great, so let's move on now to the game worker rates for FY23. So the activities department has requested a five dollar rate increase across the board for all of their game worker rates. I don't recall the last time this has been brought forward. You said soon. it's been years uh, when the two ADs uh, sent me this request. It's been several years. 
and um, I did some quick math too, and it, um, it it's much needed again, like some of our other um, hourly rates, and um, you know it costs roughly twenty four hundred dollars for each site to do this increase of the two sites, so it's I think it's affordable and it's something we need to do. Was there a reason that there's some of them that didn't change? Was it they, those were okay in terms of we didn't have problems filling those positions or they seem to be competitive? Uh, yeah, I'm assuming they're competitive or, at, or adequate or at, for what the work, what the yeah, work is. Got it. I have a question. Does this include referees at all? I, I don't see them on here necessarily, but are they covered in other things or is just the other workers? Um, this is this is all that was sent to us. Yeah, I think so. I'm not positive, but I think the referees are actually paid through the athletic teams that are playing. I think that's through a separate fund. But they're not reporting a, a rate. No. This, is, this is what we got from ABC. And the, my follow up question to that is, is we're talking about raising wages here for a lot of people in our district. Um, are we going to be able to afford that long term in, within our budget overall? Or, you know, obviously we're going to have to decide what's worth it and what's not um, to make some cutbacks. That's a great question. But most of these fees are supported by the individual sports and the um, gate fees that they get. So it's coded, it comes out of these codes. So they're supporting it on their own. And these are not district fees at this point. So they generate the money and they sell their tickets and then um, they hire a ticket taker uh, and it would come out of that budget code for that sport. Has that budget code for each sport ever gone negative? Uh, well, no, because we just went from the student activity accounts to the general fund. Okay. So that will be the process now. We'll have to look okay. at it at the end of the year, but it's a good question. So along with that, just to uh, ask the question further for as much of the public as everybody too, uh, the increase in hourly rates and the substitute rates too would be, that would be more out of our general accounts. And, and some, sometimes there are unforeseen additional expenses, uh, like if we can't get a substitute teacher, for example, quite often we have somebody working on a one-sixth overload, which actually costs more. Uh, than having a substitute teacher, so that that's part of the, the offset. But just in general, with those substitute and hourly changes, we believe that this is sustainable for the district. Can we afford? Can we afford to have these salary increases? So, are we just talking this sheet, or are we talking this sheet? This sheet. So yes, this. So the hourly. And, and yes. So I when I did my quick math, my rough math, it, it, I did it by um, season. And it came to roughly twenty four hundred dollars for each site. For the game worker rates. For all these game worker yep. rates, correct. But for the hourly and substitute pay rates. So are, are we are we talking about your hourly? Yes. Okay. Well, that's a good question. Uh, Three dollars makes a big difference. So I'd have to pull a report, and and I can do that and see what we did spend on substitutes last year in the general fund and then we'd have to do the math uh, but I could certainly do that now we didn't have a lot of subs the last two or in back in 2021 but last year we did and we struggled to find them so the number is still somewhat skewed I go back to probably 1920 but um, I think at every any point districts do have to kind of level the playing field with their with our rates because we do need to be competitive. Um, I'm very familiar with TOC and I think it's a wonderful um, wonderful resource for us but these people can also choose to go to a different district so we have to be competitive and um, you know we'll have to take a look at it I mean the bite could be it could be significant but we have to discuss where we're going to take that out of. And I, and I also think to John's comment, what we saw last year when we really struggled to fill substitutes was teachers and principals 
giving up their prep time. Yep. So there's an overload potential cost, as he said, but there's also kind of a, a mental cost to our staff as well to, to not have breaks and not have what they really should be having. So um, yes, I think fiscally responsibly, we, we can take a look at that just to see, but there's some things that I would say are non-monetary that we can't necessarily put a price on that are value add to our employees and the ability for them to keep saying during the school year. So I think there's a, a balance there that we'll have to. Well, it's a balance when you think about stewardship because we have resources that are monetary in value and then we have people that are as a huge significant resource. So we cannot deplete the people at the cost of the financial. So we have to come to that balance when we think about stewardship and being responsible to the taxpayers. Well said. And as as superintendent in balancing those those two competing interests, I, I, I believe that just for systemic sustainability and the benefit of everybody, this is the, the best choice. And I think based on our recommendation from our executive director of business services and finance and executive director of human resources and operations. <laughs> Okay. Other questions? Different. All right. Okay. So now we move on. Um, our financial reports will begin later as we are finishing up our audit. Correct. Yes. So we will worry about those in uh, October, maybe even October, maybe probably November meeting. In our October meeting, I'll start presenting our FY23 monthly budget summary. And I still won't really be able to present our FY22 because they'll be deep in still. they're still auditing our final numbers. But I can start presenting our FY23 numbers in our at our October meeting. Perfect. All right. So moving on, we have no fundraisers. So now we move on to bids, RFP, and quotes. We have none this month. So now we're on to D, contracts, change order, and leases. And the first one we have is a Cook County tuition agreement with ISD 709 for math services and FY23 for intermediate algebra, algebra 2, and algebra 2 concepts. So we received a request from Cook County. Um, they really did not have any math teachers, so they reached out to us. And um, uh, we have this agreement with them now. and. Um, we're potentially thinking it's 47 to 53 students, but we'll see. I mean, you know, you have the big plan, and then sometimes we don't get all those um, numbers. But uh, we're we're trying to be um, good neighbors, and we want all children to be educated. So we were willing to uh, do this agreement with them. Great. And then, how does the um, how does the money split with that? Do we get a portion of that allocation from the state because we're taking on? We really don't. We really will just get money from Cook County. Cook County. It'll be a strict tuition agreement. Okay. And I do believe um, the they're working with Cattery on uh, looking at you know how ADMs and whatnot. But for the most part, it will be a tuition, a third party tuition, tuition agreement. Um, and then the other question I had about this, so 47 to 53 students, if this is going through, we said AEO, what does that load look like for those teachers? Does that have an impact on load? We were assured that we would not have to add any more teachers, that the teachers had um, time in their day to okay. add the students. That's so correct. We, would, okay. we will hope that's what happens. Because that's a great question because that's one of the things as the request came from Cook County, we want to be assured that this wouldn't add additional financial burden on the district and that it would pay for itself and through calculations and working with the principal, um, we're told that uh, the staff had the capacity to absorb these students and this was a way to also build the program and that it wouldn't cost the district additional um, resources. So we have a cost of enrollment of 605 per semester per student per course. That's correct. And that is in alignment on any, we have two other third party agreements with Hermantown and we want it to be the same. Okay. So it is in alignment to those charges as well. Perfect. That's great news. And I'm sure Cook County appreciates it. Math yes. teachers aren't easy to find. Yes. 
Okay, and then we have the St. Louis County. Let me just figure out where I'm at here. Um, now we have the St. Louis County um, Check and Connect Mentor Contract for FY23. This is the huge grant that St. Louis County got, correct, that we discussed. We talked earlier in some of the call meetings and stuff about this Check and Connect grant. That is okay, I just wanted to make sure. So this looks like, is this a one point cover? So this, this is a, um, an agreement we've already have in place, a grant with St. Louis County. This is an amendment to add an additional one FTE for 50000 So we're equal to St. Louis County for this. And this one, this FTE is going to be full-time supporting the Check and Connect program? Correct. At both East and Metro? No, this is, this is the Check and Connect um, mentor that would be supporting AOC. Yes, there, that's what I've got. Okay, sorry about that. So we have 14 check and connect mentors at four sites Denfeld, Duluth, Fort Eden, and Lincoln Park. Now we're adding the additional mentor at the Area Learning Center. That's correct. That's great. Because we haven't had check and connect at the Area Learning Center previous to this, have we? No, we haven't. This is going to be huge. Are they looking forward to having the check and connect? Oh, they're definitely looking forward. And, and we were excited that um, St. Louis County had the additional funds. funds. So we were able to fund the position and decided to offer it to our area learning center. That's great. Member Oswald? I'm just trying to understand the math here. With the, the amount, if we're having 15 mentors, but yet um, St. Louis County is only reimbursing us $708,000 this year, um, does that leave a balance of a million dollars coming out of our budget? It's a three-year grant, right. so it's spread out, out. So we pay, and then we send them an invoice, and they reimburse us. But it says that the, for the total, there is 1.7 million for all three sets of school years. Correct. Um, but like for for this school year, it's 708,000. Is that include everything for all 15? Yes. Okay. And then why was last year's only 298,000? They, because it started in January, I think there was a, a start date that was halfway through the year. Okay. So. And are we still requiring them all to be um, licensed mental health practitioners? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. And we have we been able to fill and maintain those positions? Yeah, we've been able to hire all of the positions all successfully. Right. Good to know. Thank you. Very positive. Great questions. Okay, so. Now we're moving on to miscellaneous informational items. No action required. Um, first thing, we'll have our district property update. That document is contained within the board package. And I can answer questions. I probably don't need to read word yeah. for word, but things are looking really good. Perfect. Questions? The photographs are great. They are. They're. <coughs> Sorry, I was dropping it, wasn't it? But I was talking about the one thing. I know the board has expressed interest in um, some tours, and I know we talked preliminarily about it, but then with the start of the school year, we got kind of busy. Um, maybe if you could shoot um, a couple of dates and could share them with the board for, for potential visits to the site, I know that was of interest to uh, Or we could go at it the other way. The board can pick some dates, like try and make those work. That might be easier. Have you met us? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should fix some dates. Yeah, I think that would be more. That's very helpful. Yeah. Would, uh, the board Unless you want to wait till it's done. Yeah. <laughs> no, Do you feel the board would prefer towards the end of the week or earlier in the week? Midday, end of day? One of each? Yeah. <laughs> Probably two dates with a couple, just because then some that can make it, some that can't. Kind of midday and then end of day or something? Yeah, that'd be that'd perfect. Be okay, I'll, pick, I'll talk to Jason and Nathan. Great. That's yeah. awesome. All right, so we have the ask a question. Yeah. So are we not having any basement storage in our new building? Because I don't see any basements in these pictures, so I'm just making sure. No, there is no basement storage. <laughs> okay. Part of the good thing about moving to UHG was people had to tear things down and clean and we're not even completed with that task, but we'll we'll get there. Alright, so just so all the schools can't look forward to sending more stuff 
no. Just making that clear. Right. It would be neat and clean from now on. From now on. All right. I appreciate that. Um, then we have an update from Greg Palmer, and Simone and I have talked. We're going to update Kathy's information on there and put her information on. There's information about um, 800 East Central Entrance back on the market, all marketing in place and active, and this is as of October 1st, 2022. So we've tripped forward in time a little bit, right? It's not October. Okay. Must be an error in the date. Must be an error in the date, yeah. Okay. All right, so now we look at our expenditure contracts. And the first time that I finally noticed DR, DUG, and SAF, it's the first time I was like, oh, this is new. No, it's not. Um, can look through those. We also have all of the agreements for piano tuning, which is important. We want our students to have tuned piano. Um, renting parking spaces for our east and a whole bunch of other contracts that we have in here. If you move to page 123 in our booklet, we move on to our no cost contracts. I, I just have a Oh yeah, sorry Alana. Perhaps we um, can reword the logical um, explanation in there because I fear that the public may read that in um, not nice terms that that it's the service used by threat in DS for data services. Um, yeah, so perhaps you can use that. So people business don't... all for business <laughs> services. That's, I noticed that too, Alana. You're right. I, I'm just saying you know, we don't want to indicate that we use DS. Yeah, that's probably in, uh, oh, oh data request. I totally have it started. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we might want to clean some, <laughs> clarify that language a little bit. Perfect. Thanks. Moving on to 123, we look at our no cost contract sign. We have some with Lake Superior Swim Club, um, Children's Dental Services. They come to Piedmont. They're fantastic. University of Minnesota, um, Minskew System. Yes, Duluth, Minnesota Humanities, HDC, and the Boosters are all no cost contracts. And then moving on to 160, we have our revenue contracts, and that's Harbor City International for 25,000 to provide vended meals to Harbor City students for the 2022-2023 school year. Are those, um, are those lunches included in our lunch counts that we had got earlier, the 33,000? That is a great question. That's a good question. I'm going to find out. Yeah, I write that down. Yeah. <laughs> and are there other places that we make lunches for besides Harbor City yeah, under contract? That's my Like this is the only contract we've received. Okay. So I didn't know if, if like Merritt Creek or you know those if any of the. Um, I wonder what I was just gonna look in that nutrition report. Were they listed? I don't remember seeing them, but I didn't look at it that number either. Our grant application, um, Jen Jaros from ECFE for the Northland Foundation for SEL mentorship to our local child care providers. And that is what we have on the agenda this week for HR Business Services. Are there questions? Yes. Do we feel that with the meeting less than an hour, we got our hands right I'm just kidding. I'm going to do my second career as an auctioneer. <laughs> Start my dance. So practice. Get your practice early. I need it. We do have time for you to put on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then you have your look down. Blue steel wasn't that from. Oh, right. 
So um, the hourly rate sheet, I will be adjusting that pair up for the regular board meeting. Perfect. So it'll, it'll be a different attachment. Okay. I won't remember that. <laughs> Are there other questions? Good. All right. Great job, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Thank you. week. Thank you. Thank you.